address of the emergency? We have a team heading up to Emerald Lake. Great to hear from you. Have a good night. Backcountry Amateur Radio, my name is Eric, KI7WJP. A while back, I was talking about participating with TERT, T-E-R-T, Timpanogos Emergency Response Team, and my role as communications team member on a couple of weekends this summer. The first weekend was in August. That weekend was going to be my first ever with them, and I didn't really know what to expect. So I came in with my radio and my, my backpacking equipment. My bag still probably weighed about 40 pounds with my communications gear. The other roles are medical, EMT or uh, Wolfer, or Wilderness First Responder, people with those certifications. So my role as communication, I wanted to provide the best, uh, the best support that I could. I just did not realize that my role as communication would be probably be more involving some troubleshooting and, and really being able to overcome some environmental characteristics that would mitigate our radio wave propagation. They needed some better antenna options. And it wasn't until towards the end of that first weekend, I, I discovered that there was a roll-up J-pole in our equipment. And that equipment is shared. And I just, I didn't realize that that would be something that I could have used and, and should have used in order to facilitate communication between our team on the mountain and the lower teams at the trailheads. Uh, not to mention with the, the phone patch that we have that communicates with the sheriff's office. I learned that battery power wasn't the issue. Most of the radio communication is short and dispersed, intermittent at best, and I was going to have enough battery no matter how I looked at it. And I brought probably too much battery power. In place of carrying the spare battery packs in excess, I should be carrying more antenna options. The radio I took up was the Radiati GS5B because I wanted something that was somewhat weather resistant, but also easy to use and easy to manipulate if I needed to program frequencies. It's because the Radiati has open frequency um, programming, unlike my Yesu, I could program in a GMRS frequency to communicate with uh, trail goers who may or may not have someone injured in their party and hand out a GMRS frequency radio. And that would be an emergency situation where it's justified. Now, some of us in normal day activity, we're not gonna run into an emergency situation where that's justified. This would be one of those scenarios. I had wanted to experiment with some rain gear. I'm not a rain gear person, our climate it doesn't work well. It could, it could keep you dry in the desert in a rainstorm. But my takeaway from this experience is that rain gear in the Alpine shouldn't ever be in your pack. Uh, you should be carrying equipment that breathes. So spend a bit more Gore-Tex type material. And that is going to breathe better and pull that moisture away from your skin. The weather for that first weekend dictated a lot of what we did. We took shelter in, in the collapsed shelter that uh, still stands. The roof still forms a, a bit of a shelter and it protected us from some rain, but it was cold. It was about 45 degrees and we post up at a location for about eight hours, nine hours during the day. And not moving, we got kind of cold. You know, bundled up with all the equipment that we, I had and I made an error in judgment in not choosing to bring in uh, and a puff style insulated jacket. Now this is a down coat. I, for the mountain situations, I carry a Prima Loft kind of puffy insulation layer. It actually weighs less than this down coat and, it's so, and it is a little bit more bulky, however, in my pack. However, I did not have those things. The best performing article of clothing that I had uh, was some mountaineering pants designed around ice climbing that shed moisture, but also keep moisture out. Having rain equipment for me is, is a no-go. In the Alpine, where I spend most of my time, uh, I will no longer have that in my pack. Three weeks later, I had some time to plan and think out my September weekend. And I decided to pack similarly with more layers for insulation, including this jacket. 
Now this jacket was a winner. We were not forecast to have rain like the weekend I was up there before. And it was going to be sunny, but it was going to be cold. 45 would probably be our high for the day. So I packed this coat for the extra warmth. I packed no gear for inclement weather as far as precipitation goes because if that was going to be the case i was just going to take shelter in my warmer equipment i had multiple layers for legs to keep warm carried a charging supply cable and some similar equipment for my handheld radio i also brought it with the abri 42 and a half inch antenna to overcome some of the communication obstacles we had now here's a little diagram of what I was experiencing. I could communicate to a camp that didn't make any sense geographically. The knife edge diffraction came into play with the amazing communication with that, that trailhead team. But the almost line of sight communication was very difficult with our other trailhead. And I couldn't explain that other than Something that I've noticed out in the mountains is the lens shape of a mountain that rolls over tends to break up my frequency or my, my signal path and my intended line of sight contact was not receiving my signal at 5 watts with, the, with a whip antenna such as the signal stick. The Abri overcame that easily. Um, so the antenna factor there was, was huge. Um, I wasn't the only person to experience some, some problems with what we call high camp or our station during the day up on the mountain at 10 and a half thousand feet. We did employ the roll up J pole that was part of the gears, the team's gear and that worked well, but the roll up J pole has to be set up on a mast after discovering that the Abri antenna worked better than all other options and still offered portability so I could be on the move and use that antenna where I needed to, when I needed to, and I was overcoming my communication obstacle. Is I also brought on my HF equipment on that second trip. All in all, my pack was lighter than on my first trip. I was able to set up an Envis 80 meter antenna with 40 meter link. And on 80 meters, I communicated with uh, Kevin, K7SW. Uh, here's, a, here's a clip of that audio. Uh, up there in case people need some help. Most of the time it's just, uh, you know, a few bottles of water here and there. We filtered water for people today. And, uh... All right, very cool. That sounds like that's an awful lot of fun. Ten years ago, I was involved with some of that stuff up there, but uh, nothing uh, to the detail of you for sure. And um, it's, it's a cool thing to do. Well, that means you won't be getting any sleep tonight. I carried the FT817ND and my homemade homebrew uh, Envis antenna. Through the radio, we communicate directly to a 911 dispatch. We radio in what is going on, uh, and usually nothing's going on, thankfully. We prefer to use the ham radio frequencies when possible to communicate among the team members and our trailhead teams. The experience that I had with the radio communication up there was eye opening. I've never done public service before with radio. I've only played on my own, but my experience in the mountains had been limited. My role for communication in this mountain team, mountain first responder team, was to troubleshoot the issues that were dynamic based on weather and geography. For this year, this is what I have for you. My focus on the radio equipment and clothing was a big thing for me, and I wanted to share that with you. The radio equipment is really important when it comes to public service. If you are offering your skills, the ham radio operator in public service, you need to be prepared to troubleshoot issues you might run into. Know your systems, know your repeaters, know your radio, and know your protocol, and know who you need to talk to. You might not be the only person with a radio, but you might be the only person with skills to troubleshoot communication. So keep that in mind, and I hope you have the best experience ever. Don't forget your hashtag, deep backcountry comms, and we'll catch you on the next one.